If you're like me and nobody likes you and you kind of need people to play Dragon Ball Super card game with, instead of resorting to your usual arsenal of emotional blackmail and a little bit of stabbing, can I recommend you playing this? Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to the Sensor Pop channel. Series 12 Lord Slug is a hard nut to crack because it goes against all established convention of, you know, trying to be good at this card game. Hand size is a very important aspect in this card game. It is very important for us to keep our hand size up while simultaneously manage your, hand, your opponent's hand size, keeping it down. But the Lord Slug archetype does exactly the opposite. It makes you and your opponent draw your opponent more so than you. So why why do we want to do that? The strength of this deck is not apparent immediately, but after playing it for a couple of times, I think I start to slowly understand the true strength of the deck. I find it pretty fascinating actually. I hope I got you excited. This is my take, my explanation of the mechanics, the engine and what makes one of the most mind-boggling decks that we have to date, Series 12 Vicious Rejuvenation Lord Slug deck profile takes. See you guys after the short intro, alright? Hey guys, I want to welcome you back from the intro. We are gonna go on a journey together, so strap on the seatbelt. The journey is gonna be a little bit strange, a little bit bumpy, but I hope by the time we reach the final destination, I will be able to convince you why this deck is worth your time and why this deck, in my opinion, in my most humblest opinion, it is borderline genius. This deck is a Trojan horse. When this card attacks, you and your opponent gets to draw a card. You heard this correctly. It's not about you. You and your opponent gets to draw a card. Both of you are happy. Both of you are really, really good friends. If it, There's two ways to flip this card over. When you have three or more energy, you do rejuvenate. You get to draw two cards flip it over. The second one is more conventional. When you have four or less life, you get to untap. You and your opponent gets to draw one card. You untap two energy and you flip this card over. All right. When this card is awakened, he is a 20k leader always during aggression. But there is a situation when you become 15k, that is when your opponent has seven or less life during their turn. It gets a minus 5k, all right? When this card attacks, you and your opponent gets to draw a card and activate main once per turn. This is where the mechanics of this deck comes in. When your opponent has 10 or more cards in their hands, you unlock a reward for yourself. So this is the Lord Slug reward program you get to unlock when you reach, uh, when your opponent is happy. You take your opponent like customers, right? Like clients. Every time they are happy, they are happy skill. It's like seven cards in their hands or 10 cards or more cards in their hands. You get to un 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 unlock reward program for yourself. It rewards for yourself. And the first one is you get to choose something from your drop area two or less and then you play it. When I refer to something from this uh, point onwards, I'm always saying mono green slug army. It's just easier to say something than mono green slug army, ain't it? All right. So what is this deck about? Let me tell you straight from the start. This deck is a Trojan horse. You keep your opponent happy by giving them a lot of hand size cards. But at the end, in, in, at the, at the, behind the scene, you are actually extracting more from your opponent while your opponent is just so happy with so many hand size. But and, uh, at the same time, you are setting up your board easily with all this reward that you unlocked. And then your battle, your, your, your opponent doesn't realize that his deck, when he's attacking, defending or doing anything, will slowly become very, very inefficient. So let's take a look at what are the activate main option once per turn, all right? Your first one is your super combo. Yes, correct. This deck can recycle super combo. Of course, your first super combo is zero plus 5k. With a unison card, you get to draw a card, but you can use it. If your opponent has 10 or more cards, you can always use it and bring it back. But take note that your you are always kind of defending at uh, 20k and you're swinging at always 20 k so that 5k kind of makes you balance but we are just we are not playing this all the time because we are also be playing lord slug mighty agent of destruction how good is this card it is really good so i'm kind of splitting like one to three two to two i'm kind of still testing out the ratio let me know what works better for you 
just do that number for you. Uh, it is a super combo, does it draws you a card, but when your opponent activates a counterplay skill, your opponent chooses two cards from their hands and discard it. This is when the inefficiency comes in. And usually you tap two for this card. Uh, yeah, and sometimes your opponent pops it. Yeah, not really nice because it's one of a super combo, but in this deck, it doesn't matter. Your super combo is going to come back anyways with your Lord's Luck ability, ain't it? So when you activate it, you can swing with a leader, combo with this, or when you're defending with your leader, combo with this, then the next turn, uh, activate main, this card comes back on the board. If you want to use it again, use it again. It's a free 0 plus 10k every single turn, and it kind of keeps a check on those counterplays in this meta. This card cannot be KO'd, by the way. I'll show you why. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the Unison. Unison is also another reward that you unlock because if your opponent has seven or more cards, you reward, you unlock a reward from the Lord's Luck reward program. Uh, you get to play him for one energy, for one marker, you do a plus one, then it becomes a two marker. That plus one is you choose one card from hands, put it under the deck, you and your opponent get a draw card, you get to free play something, which is one drop. And uh, if you remove four markers and one card from underneath this, you get to do a rejuvenate, all right? And uh, your opponent gets to choose at the end of the turn to put that one card back into their deck but a lot of them won't, and uh, it is actually suicidal to do that, and su suicidal not to do that. It's do, you die, Do if you don't do, you also die. What are the one drops that we are playing? A lot of them. This deck has a lot of one drop to keep that bone up, and also those one drops are so helpful. So Wings, the morale booster, when you play him, he has barrier, with unique one, one piece only. Uh, it reduces the energy cost of Lord's Luck cards in your hands by one. You cannot reduce the specified cost, but it is good enough. It is good enough. All right. And then the other one, it's Surprise Attack Angela. So when you play him, he is the searcher, only by hand, so you cannot use your Lord's Luck ability to recycle him. You can do it for wings. If your opponent takes up wings, you can play him back though. Really good. And uh, so you add up to one, uh, you do up, to, you look up to top five, at once uh, Lord's Luck army card three or less into your hands or your units card into your hand. And the other one is one of the most important pieces in your deck. It is Lord's Luck Conqueror Resolve. This card has so much value. If your card, if your leader card is the Slug army, you and your opponent gets to draw one, your opponent can choose one, put it back into the deck. If they don't do so, it's fine. It's also fine. All right, activate main. If your opponent has seven more cards in their deck, in their hands, you unlock a reward from the Lord's Luck reward program. You get to play something 19k from your hands, just like that, once per turn. So you can just keep on playing it when he stays on the board. Recyclable with Lord's Luck. What are the options? The options are simply amazing. The first one is Wings Invader of Earth. How good is this card? Right up there. Because Born 2, when this card is in rest mode, mono green slug army cards in your battle area cannot be KO'd by your opponent's skill. You said, hey, Sensor Pop, what about, why don't they just have a barrier? Because this card, it's sometimes, most of the time, or it is sometimes better than barrier. Because remember, there are, unless it is with black battle cards where they can send them to warp, then barrier will be so much better because you're kind of protecting yourself. But then I think that's how you need to take care of this deck, ain't it? But if you are playing other colors and says, choose one of your opponent's card and KO it, ignoring barrier, KO it. No, you cannot. They don't have barrier. They just cannot be KO'd. So your opponent has to swing against this 19k to take it out. Your opponent has a big hand. You have a big hand. So the next one is Angela, Invader of Earth. If your leader card is a Slug Army card, how good is this card? Pretty, pretty good. Because uh, I thought that this card wasn't that good. But when you play him, if you will, it's a comeback card. When you have six or less cards in your hands, your opponent has 10 or more cards in their hands you get to draw three cards at the end of the turn. And it's a 19k that you can free play with this one cost. Or usually for me, I tap two because with wings on the board, he is one of those cards that gets the benefit earlier on in the game. So it's just two energy, 19k that draws you three cards at the end of the turn, helps you to come back. Why not? It's pretty good. But the best card in this game, it has to be Lord Slug Thor of Plan. This is when the inefficiency in battle comes in for your opponent. And your opponent is happy about that. But the thing is, in the end, you get to gain. What do I mean by that? It has deflect, doesn't have barrier. Why? It cannot be KO'd, my friend. It cannot be KO'd because of wings. 
Bond 2, if your leader card is a Slug Army card, if your opponent uses a card in combo, you may place the card in your opponent in your owner's in their owner's drop area. If you do so, you add your opponent gets to draw a card. So whenever whenever the combo you choose, you can say, okay, do I want to choose that card? And once they hit the 10k, I usually do that, but sometimes I hit the 5k because I just want to draw a card, and you just discard it, and you and your opponent gets to draw a card. The question is, Sizzle Pop. Uh, why is this inefficient? It's inefficient in two ways, right? The thing is, they sometimes use the super comp, use the 10k, they are tapping one for the 10k, you choose it, you put it into drop area, you and your opponent get to draw a card, that is correct, but you get to gain most of it, because your opponent expand a card to draw a card, you don't do that, so you're always coming out at the end. Uh, it's not during your opponent's turn, it's not during your turn, it's just once per turn. So you can use it aggressively and you can use it in your defensive step also at the same time. So every single time this card is on the board, you get to draw. And this card is not unique, Wing is not unique, Angela is not unique. Every time they're on the board, you can stack them and stack them and stack them and stack them. Then you get various, various benefit from it. Re take, take for example, if your opponent does something like a rival, they put a yellow card and a blue card and then you choose that blue card if you know the deck it's a little bit more blue heavy then you choose that yellow card put it into the drop area you and Peron get to draw a card but then you gain one you're plus one your opponent's deal starts at zero amazing and this card can recycle because when he's removed by a skill or KO'd you get to play one drop back into your deck all right, so let's take a look at, uh, we know that the one drops are recyclable from your leader's ability and also from Lord Slug. So what about the three drops? They are also recyclable in the deck. With this uh, set for Lord Slug, Young Again, Bond 2, when you play this card, it is three energy with wings. You get to choose one uh, Lord Slug army card and then you play on the board, three or less, and play on the board, you untap one. Now you have a 20k and with just two energy, you get to recycle one of them uh, back into the deck. So if they t manage to take out wings, no worries, next turn, use your uh, one drops ability, play something else, which is three cost, maybe a Lord Slug or a Wings, and then use Lord Slug to bring whatever is in the drop area back into the board once again. And now let's take a look at the game ender. It is Lord Slug, Monster Cycle. How good is this card? Pretty, pretty good. Four cost if you have Wings, five cost if you don't, 30k, Deflect, Double Striker. Um, he cannot be KO because... Um, so if someone frees a counter player against this card, it's fine. Your wings is on the board, put it in rest mode first. This card doesn't have barrier, but it just cannot be KO'd. It's fine. So it is really good. So when this card swings, 30k double striker once per turn, uh, when he plays it, your opponent clears the board, does not ignore barrier. So things with barrier stays, but their unison gets minus two and all their, all, all their other battle cards gets removed. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a counter skills, your opponent chooses six cards in their hands, discard their rest, and to add salt to injury, both of you draws a card. Why do you draw a card? Because you want him to get into seven so that you can activate your unlock rewards in your Slug Army reward program. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I really like this deck, as you can see. So what if your opponent has out for, you know, they cannot KO him, but there's sometimes you have, uh, like playing against Gogeta, that 7 drop, that actually bounces cards back into your hands because they don't have barrier, they can be affected by those effects, they just cannot be KO'd, right? Yeah, let's go the unison route, because uh, we are playing also Vegeta, Absolute, uh, Resolute, Agent of Destruction. How good is this card in the deck? Very good in my opinion. I'm not taking him out because he is unison. So uh, there is not a lot of answer for this guy. Double strike critical. When you play for four energy plus one, it is a 25k double strike critical that you set at five marker. Very difficult to remove him from there on. And uh, yeah, you, if you choose one card from your hand, discard it. When this card is played, choose all of your opponent's battle card, ignoring barrier and KO them. There are situations where you need to do that. And this is one of the ways. Sometimes you can do both though, but not in one turn. It's too energy intensive, but uh, you can do that if you want to. Yep. All right. So this is the deck itself. I hope I make you understand. So basically it is a Trojan horse. Your opponent, you keep your opponent happy by giving them a lot of hand size, but at the back, in the backstage, you are extracting more than to give them. And by the time they realize that, they just realize that, oh, that is happening. 
it is a little bit too late for them. If they even realize that because they are always so happy with their huge hand size. And by the time uh, a lot of them, they realize that why is this deck? Why are they losing to this deck? That's what's going to happen when you play this deck. All right. So uh, another thing is, of course, when you set up your board correctly, like, for example, with wings, like Lord Slug, Thor of, uh, Thor of Plants, that three cores, MVP of this deck, by the way. Um, yeah, your opponent's combo phase, defense phase, and together with your uh, Lord Slug super combo, their counterplay all becomes very, very inefficient. And in the battle of attrition, you will come out in the end as a victor. All right. But I'm going to throw you, if that is not enough, and if that doesn't still convince you to play this deck and give this deck a go, I do have another win con, which is mealing. I told you before at the start that this deck has the ability to meal and draw your opponent to death, right? So it's like gluttony. You eat until you die. Uh, this card is simply good because it helps you to self-awaken, helps you to draw into your pieces if you need to. But if you just keep one in your drop area, sometimes your opponent goes down to four cards in their deck and they don't know what to do. Swing with your leader, draw one, use your unison, draw one, tap two, you and your opponent draws a card, draws two cards and your opponent dies. Just like that from melee. Happens two times when I was playtesting. And... Um, yeah, so I actually wanted to say something. And there are so many pieces on the board itself, you are able to play Cell Zeno just like that also. One MVP of the deck is this. Uh, we are playing 56 cards, so you are going to be outlasting your opponent. Your opponent will be drawing more than you, by the way, in the earlier games because they do draw during the turn, not during your turn. Uh, and they get the benefit from you. So by the time they realize that, if they're playing a 50-card deck because they, are, they want to do efficiency, by the time they realize they are, their deck is seriously low, they're getting into trouble. Yep. And uh, one honorable mention is this. I do have four copies of that, but I did not play it in my deck. I don't have space for it, but it seems that this card is good. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, maybe should I play it? Because the deck does not have board control until you are willing to pay for energy for it. So maybe, let's see how this deck goes. All right, so this is the end of the video. I hope I'm convincing and uh, I really encourage you to give this deck a try. I really like it. It has reason from the deck that, hey, I don't want to play into the deck that says, this is my favorite deck in Series 12. I'm not, uh, I'm not lying to you. I love this deck a lot. All right, uh, guys, thank you and see you guys in the next video, right? Ciao, bye.